Oh, I have a whole box. Oh, oh hey, we're Ron. playing. Hey, you, hey, you, come on, sit down. You're sitting at the grown ups table. I'm your host, Jesse Pippinella. And as always, my partner in crime, John Jacobs. Thank you so much. Sorry, my dogs are deciding that. You know what? Let's fight while he's trying to start the show. Guys, hey, there you go. Now they're done. All right. So, anyways, this is what this is like what rock and roll life is. You know, in the recording studio, you have two bandmates fighting because someone slept with their girlfriend. In this case, I have two dogs fighting over who's going to have sex with the stuffed monkey. That's just my life. But anyway, so who's going to have sex with the stuffed monkey? Well, it looks it you? like this. It well, it, <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. Right now, it looks like Gizmo's going to get it. Uh, honey, could you could you stop the dog violence over here so I can stop my show? Anyways. So, today we're going to be talking about some Christmas flicks. Hold on one second. I'm just going to take it away. No one gets the fucking monkey, all right? Nobody. That's it. Done. Okay, anyways. This is the monkey, everybody. Anyways. So, today we're going to be talking about Christmas movies, everybody. And um, right now, uh, we're going we're gonna to be talking about uh, Die Hard, Batman Returns, Black Christmas, all the great <laughs> stuff that is on there. And... Best part is we have an incredible guest that's going to be on today. Uh, very excited to have this guy on. He is the creator of six games uh, from Rookie Mage. And we have a little surprise for you so you guys can check out his games. But without further ado, let's get him on the pod. Please give it up for Jordan McLaughlin, everybody. Yeah! Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me. Yay, Jordan. Dude, it is. I am so excited to have you on. Um I, because I'm going to tell you this, I love, I love board games, card games, any types of games, party games. And I was looking at uh, your, your website here and you, I mean, the fact that you have something called nuns with nunchucks, <laughs> fucking done, okay? <laughs> like, tell me, creating the names to some of these games has to be just as fun as making these games. Oh yeah, the a lot of the times like I'll I'll have a name before I even have an idea what a game would really? be. Really? Just because like that is such a catchy name, I got to write this down. I got to find something that works for it. Okay. Um, so yeah, well, there's been a couple games that literally the first thing that happened was the name. <laughs> I I'm going to put it up real quick cuz I want everybody to see it cuz I just I, just, <laughs> I, love, just, it. I love this so much. <laughs> Because I, I love how she's doing the uh, the 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 ninja gesture, like. <sighs> yeah, the the guy that did the art for this. Um, so I I did art for like Don't Get Stabbed and a couple other ones, but for this one I used a guy. His name's Creeps McPeaks, and he does the art at the Dank House in Newark. Oh, um, and I, like I just walked in, and his art was up like on the wall. I'm like, I've got to find this guy because this is what I envisioned nuns with nunchucks looking like. So I went and like pestered the bartender till they gave me his email. <laughs> so he finally got it. I'm like, hey, like I make games and I really want to make a game with you. And he came over and like we got along great. He totally understood exactly what it was I was trying to do with it. Like just knocked it out of the park art wise. Um, I'm super excited that it's going to be on Kickstarter mm, March ish. Uh, Nice. Depends on what my calendar looks like after the, the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. Uh, that's definitely something that I'll be kickstarting for sure. Awesome. Mm. I appreciate it. Yeah. And let us know how we can help out with that because I think that's so cool. And, and this is such an interesting thing to be like, for example, see, I'm a comedian. All right. So, mm. you know, my process, write a joke, go on stage and stuff. You were a guy that's like, all right, I got an idea for a game. That is to me just such an interesting idea. So you found this guy who do the artwork and you just, you created the rules, the products, and you just got it to kickstart. That's incredible. Yeah. Like it, it's something I never thought I would be in. Like it never even occurred to me to, to ever get into it. Um, and then like we were having like a game night with my cousins and okay. my cousin just leaned over and she's like, you know, you should make one of these. And I'm just like, yeah, I fucking should. <laughs> <laughs> so is and that like, story? Is I, that how it happened? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Like, okay. it never occurred to me. And then she planted this little seed in my brain. And like the drive home from her house, I'm like, my poor partner is driving because I am totally trashed. And <laughs> I'm just going, I'm going to call it Don't Get Stabbed. It's going to be one person against everyone else. And one's going to be a killer. And I probably just talked to the entire car ride. I don't remember a lot about that car ride, but I remember enough to make a game out of it. And <laughs> I, <laughs> 
I think everyone just thought, you know, it was just crazy Jordan talk. You know, we are just get it out of a system. Crazy Jordan. <laughs> yeah. That's well, yeah that. that's Jordan true. gets shit faced. He just talks about making up games involving stabbing. It's going to be the greatest Storm. game ever. <laughs> but uh, I, like, it, it got stuck in my brain. And like, I had to make something. Um, and then, like, two weeks later, like, I mean, I got blank poker cards from Amazon and like a bunch of like just colored markers. It started making stuff until I found something that kind of worked. And then I had it all my kind of friends and everyone play it. And like, you know, they were probably just humoring me a little bit. But then afterwards, they're kind of like, yeah, hey, this is actually fun. You have to do something with this. So then we went to Kickstarter for that one. And then they've been adding stuff since. I've got like inappropriate conversation starters. I've got kids games now. My nieces and nephews were getting pissed. I kept making games they weren't allowed to play. <laughs> <laughs> I had to start making stuff that was uh, more family appropriate. So I've got portal potties and no nuts that just came out uh, uh, this year. Uh, um, you know, I've got so secret identity games. No nuts right here. And uh, the funny story about this, Jordan, is that my wife bought this for us to play a while ago. And I didn't oh, really? put two and two together that this was yours. So I, really? I had this and I've played it. And I did, just, awesome. for whatever reason, I didn't connect the dots until now. I'm like, oh, that's one of his games. So, yeah. So uh, uh, this game is super, super fun. I love playing this. Yeah, that, that one, I'm like gameplay wise, I think that one's probably one of the best you know, ones and that I've I'm really excited for full of it because <laughs> as soon as I read down here where it said conversation starters for horrible people and oh, dirty yeah. liars, I was like, yeah. Man, that's right up my alley right there. So I can't wait to play this one too. It's super exciting. Yeah. So that one actually started as a game that didn't work. Um, oh, really? It was called One Upper when it started, okay. and okay. it was supposed to be like you know you have the one friend that's the One Upper who's just oh yeah 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 whenever you tell a story they gotta you know outdo you, and it was supposed to be stories, and then you had to try to outdo the story, and whoever outdid it the best was the best One Upper. But it was just too much pressure on people to think <laughs> that creatively that quickly. Eh, um, okay, so like you just ended up with like a bunch of awkward silences as people tried to process what to do. Um, so I'm like, I, I don't like it. I don't want people just sitting there being frustrated. They got to think stuff up. Um, but I knew conversation starters were a popular thing on Amazon. So I'm like, I think I can kind of convert this. And so I switched it over and made it into those. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm the only inappropriate conversation starters that exist. <laughs> Because uh, all the other ones are like how to connect with your partner or uh, you know, like great for family time. And then there's mine just sitting there like ice breakers. Now, now here's here's a question real quickly. So, you, so do you test video? Do you test these games out like you have a group of people who will go into a room, you watch and play these games? Yeah. So I typically kind of have like a different levels of testing. So I have... Um, the first filter, which is my partner, Alex, and anything that like an idea that I put together goes through him mm -hmm. and he will tell me if this is a great idea and I should pursue it or if I'm being a complete moron and I need to go sit in the corner and think about what I've done. <laughs> um, aren't, 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 isn't that it, it, everybody has that, especially. Yeah. You. Like it, it's like, you know, my brain is always out of control. He's the yep. one that can reel it in of yep. like, no you one's going to understand that, Jordan. That is completely stupid. You need to go back and fix this. <laughs> so that, that's my first filter. And Thank then once it goes through the first real. filter, I have like uh, play testing parties where I like I get like some okay. friends and family together just as like make sure it works as it's supposed to. And then it will go to blind testers. So like people I don't know who've like signed up on our on my website. Um yeah, so like for family games, like I picked people that had kids in their family. So I mm -hmm. like some of them, like play it with your kids, like make sure the instructions make sense because the instructions are the hardest part out of any of this. Oh my god, yeah. Cause I'm not yeah, gonna lie you. It's crazy. I there are games that I know for a fact I don't play correctly at all. Yeah, right? yeah. And I'm not, and I know that that could be a I mean, everybody's familiar with the Uno story this year about the uh draw four card rule. The, like the, the creator came out and he said, no, this is what the rule really means. And yeah. apparently like 90% of the planet has been playing it wrong. And right. Yeah. <laughs> and like, what? It's the same with Monopoly. Everyone puts money into free parking, but there's oh, like yeah. nothing Household. in there about it. 
But yeah. that's a health rule, Jordan, and that's how you stay alive in that game. So don't take that away from me, all right? <laughs> that's how I dominate Monopoly. Ask my wife. She never wins. Yeah. Yeah. But but anyways, um, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's, that's really awesome. And like I said, uh, I'm really excited to uh, – to see these uh, these games, I, I'm definitely going to be checking out your website after this because I want to check them out because I'm already I I know I shouldn't be doing this and this is probably so unprofessional as a host doing this during the show, but like I'm like right now shopping on your site. <laughs> He's like, I mean, I'm not going to complain. <laughs> I mean, I, I know that's a horrible thing. Like I should be like because like you you read all these uh, you because I'm taking communications like. Should always give one hundred percent to your guests. You know, make sure you never, ever, ever try to. You know, I mean, me, I'm just like, how much is this? And then this, and like this, and, like this. and I'm like messaging my wife, like this game does this, and like, like you, and and the, I'm even looking at your merch, man. Like, I love the the mug. Uh, which, oh yeah, which, I which, I, which, I do. Can I, can I bring it up on the screen real quick, John? Yeah, go ahead. I love I just the this mug. mug. And then Jordan's got a story about the mug. Well, Definitely. like for the mug, like I don't keep inventory of like shirts and stuff. Like they're all just kind of printed on demand, except for now the mug. Like anytime I go to like a convention or anything, like the, the mug, mug is one of the most popular things. Ah. Um, and like I've got the design on a shirt and stuff too, but that's you actually do. designed off of my partner in the morning. Um, <laughs> And so I made that design as a joke to mess with him. That's and funny. He, and he's like, you know, it's actually kind of a good design. You should throw it on something. So I'm like, I'll throw it on a mug because, you know, it would make sense. And I ordered it for him as a gift and left it on the site. And other than games, that's my most popular merch. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to get one of those mugs. Yeah. No, no, no. The, this, is, this is like really cool, man. And, uh, like I said, it, it's always awesome to sit here and uh, it, doing interviews and talking to people that are living their dream, essentially, because, I mean, mm -hmm. this is so cool. I mean, th this is living the life that's least observed, you know, yeah. like you, everybody you see the you see the foot beaten path over here. Then you see this this path that's like has branches and shit all over the place and you're there cutting it through, you know, and that's yeah. and, and I get that as a comic for me, like I have to cut through shit, you know, mm -hmm. you know like. Because I, yeah. it's not just about being a comedian, but figuring out how I work best as a comedian. But for you, it's how do I work best as a game maker? What, yeah. what, what can I do? What can I create that hasn't been done before? It's fun. It's memorable, and people are going to want to do it again. It's not going to be like this. Oh, that was great. Okay, next. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And and it seems like you got the the flair for it. You got the the interest for it. You got the passion for it. I mean, uh, the website as well as just your facial expressions says it all. I mean, I'm, I'm I talk. You got a little. Like a little gleam in your yeah. eye, like yeah, oh, yeah. that point. <laughs> cool to have. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it, I think it's such a great thing that people are like that. So that's so cool. Uh, anyways, nice. I was gonna say this to the end of the show, but I'll just say it now because because and at the risk that people will randomly do what I was doing and shop while listening. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, make sure I I put this out correctly. Promo code Grown Ups yep. Table get ten percent off games Woo. on RookieMage.com. All right. Yep. And everything's like on a holiday sale now anyway. So you get that an extra 10%. Um, up again. December is basically what decides if I get to do this another year. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. <laughs> you got to do the big push in December. Of course. Yes, of you course. do. Yes, yeah. you do. This yeah. is, make sure you got, and I'm going to, like I said, our episodes go on Roku, uh, on uh, Roku. So this episode will be on Roku. I'll yep. we'll be pushing. It, the code is good until the end of December. You oh, nice. It. Perfect. That's great. Yep. You heard uh, it for here. Our audience who, who don't watch it live. Uh, one other thing I wanted to say, Jordan, to piggyback off what you were talking about for the holiday season, the biggest box you have is portal potties and it's yeah. this big guys. So everything Jordan puts out fits in a stocking. So these games are Ooh. perfect to purchase for other people and put it in their stocking. They're super fun to play. This is your, yeah. These are stocking stuffers, people. Absolutely. Come on. Come on. I'm, I'm particularly proud of the uh, theming of that one. Of uh, it's uh it is wizards that lost their jobs, so they all go on the porta potty business and they try to put each other out of business by teleporting poop. 
I, I absolutely love it. I that's one that I have not played, and I'm really excited to play that one. It's a unique game. Like, so for my job and in life, I just shovel other people's shit. That's all I do for money. So why not do that on a cool board game and pretend exactly. to be a wizard shoveling other people's shit? Actually, actually, while you were playing your video games, Jordan actually told me he based the game on you. Yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, okay. Look well, at the I'm mirror. You have a wizard's beard. He based right the game now. on you. He's like, he's like, I know people are. I totally base this game on him. He, it's totally about him. <laughs> cool. Uh, if anybody else wants to base a game off me or Jordan, if you want to base a whole series of games off of me, go right ahead. I volunteer my likeness to anybody who wants it. Uh, I might have been a game. Uh, it would be driving in the rain and bitching about blind spots. Hey, man, look, <laughs> when you have a rental car, a, a 270 different. game for uh, everyone in Columbus. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we were on 270 at the time, so it's perfect. No, we were we were downtown, man. We were on like 70 and Broad Street and like fucking Front Street and shit. Like, you know, we, we were not yeah. on 270. At one point, we were on 270, but yeah, I don't think we were. But downtown, you hated downtown, dude. But again, I I, I'm in a rental car that's really hard to see. It's a beautiful car, but it's just hard to see out of. So I'd never buy the car, but it's a great car. Um, and it was fucking frustrating. So, yeah, I needed, <laughs> I needed a co-pilot. Thanks for bringing it up. No problem. Hey, you, that's what that's what being on a podcast is, just pulling from your real life. All right, talk to Jordan. He's the guest, not me. Okay, anyways, yes. But anyways, Jordan, uh, we'll, be, we'll give this, uh, a, again, a huge push at the end of the show. Yeah. And like I said, just for future shows, if you ever want us to test shit out, push push your products or whatnot, you let us know. This is what we love. This is so cool, dude. Yeah. When, um, when I go to, to with Kickstarter with Nuns but Nunchucks, I'm going to be making the rounds with everybody. So absolutely. I will check in and make sure you guys get a prototype copy. And We'll uh, have you back on, on too, for that. So Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll have you back probably. on. Yeah. We'll even play right now, like, on here. That's the best part about this. But anyways. Yeah. I'll show off the box for the viewers at home. Oh, there it is. That's what we wanted to see. He's yeah. got it, folks. But yeah, this has like the craziest combatants that I can think of. Let me see if I can find my favorite one in here is Tony Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln's lesser known twin brother. Nice, man. Um, and also Amish people from the future. <laughs> and it, I like all of them have like little like name that have like, a little joke behind. And I was just like, is anyone going to get that? Is anyone going to get that they're just going to be the same? <laughs> and so like, I had to add the, the jokes at the bottom, like the same as they are now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I also have in here, and I'm probably not going to be able to find it. Ah, yes. Uh, so this is considered the first your mom joke in <laughs> okay. history. It was written by Shakespeare. It's <laughs> thou hast undone our mother. Villain, I have done thy mother. <laughs> I love the Shakespearean dialect, too. That's great, man. Absolutely great. So I have one more question before we jump into talking about movies. And that is like, so just in a roundabout way, how do you take a game from inside your head and getting it manufactured to where somebody can just go to a yeah. store and buy it 100%. or online and buy it? Like, because I know a lot of people are creating – there's so many creative people out there and sometimes they don't know how to put themselves out there. So just give us the high level. How do you get a game in your brain made into something physical that somebody else can purchase and play? How does yeah, that happen? So, so like the, the first thing is you have, you know, the, the spark of the idea. Um, so like on my phone, I have a Google spreadsheet that is just the empty contents of random crap that comes into my mind. That's a good idea, um, though. It's and, like, and like when I need a new too. game, like I go back to that and I'm like, okay, what out of here might I be able to pull? Like Nuns with Nunchucks was literally 90% just stupid things that I pulled out of that spreadsheet of things I thought up at like 1130 at night when I'm supposed to be sleeping. Instead, <laughs> I got to get up and get my phone and write it down before I fall asleep and forget it. Yeah. Um, but like the, once you kind of have an idea, you'd have to like get the basic mechanics right so like i use blank poker cards most of my games are almost all cards um mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. porta bodies have boards to them um but like i got blank cards markers and just try to make something that works first and that is fun and then i start making prototypes and trying to get art together sometimes like depending on the project like i'll try to do some art i'm not the best artist 
Uh, I did the art for Don't Get Stabbed and I got away with it because I went halfway between Scooby-Doo and South Park. Um, <laughs> anything above that, I can't do. Um, so I, I have found you know, uh, illustrators and stuff to work with on different projects. Um, and I normally, after I go through that initial prototy prototyping phase, I'm like, okay, this is what that should be. Then I'll go work with an illustrator, get all the art done. And then you have to work with the manufacturer. So mm -hmm. you have to find someone that makes it, get a quote from them, and then have them send you over all their specifications, which sometimes match what you made and sometimes didn't match what you made. So you've got to go through and like for Don't Get Stabbed, I like had no clue what I was doing the first right, time. Right, it was your first one. So when I got those templates, I'm like, well, none of this works. So basically <laughs> I made the game twice, um, wow. like art-wise file to, to make it work correctly. Um, now I'm a little wiser and I know some of the things to expect so I can circumvent that as mm -hmm. early in my process. Sure. But like the, the most uncertainty is just when you send out the money for a manufacturer to make it of when you're actually going to get it in your hand. Cause after COVID the world went crazy, mm -hmm. you know, logistics wise used to be four months that, you know, from when I ordered something to when it would show up now it can be eight wow yeah, i don't know wow um, so like i'm literally right now putting in my order for next christmas <laughs> wow <laughs> like that's wow. what i said today doing i was at the bank wiring money for my order for next christmas because wow that's, that's when it's, come in. it's got to be a nightmare to keep organized and you know it's just all part of running a business but still having yeah. to having to think 12 months lead time for for purchases and things like that that's crazy to keep track of man yeah, it's like I get a really super cool 10% of my job. Like I get to do awesome stuff for 10%. The other 90% is the same boring shit everyone else has to do with their job. Running business. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, I got to pay my taxes. Oh, I got to pay the <laughs> bill. Like, oh, crap, I forgot to pay the gas bill. I got to pay that now. Like all that shit is still there. It yep. never goes away. So like if you're ever aspiring to do something, learn the stupid business shit because it's always going to be there yeah. <laughs> so just figure yep. it out yep that's uh i learned that i learned that as well with comedy so yep I, it's like you're you're you, you make games i make jokes and i bet not, that 90 percent is probably as identical as yeah. <laughs> as it's probably as plain as white bread yep. <laughs> but uh but no that is that is really fascinating um but yeah, uh, John, do you have any other uh, questions? No, I just want to tell Jordan that I'm really happy and proud of yeah. him. And uh, I've known you. Jordan for a long time. And anytime anybody I know uh, is able to not only do something creative, but also um, figure out a way to make a living off being creative, I just, I'm, I'm very happy for them. I respect them. And I think it's great that oh, they're yeah. not slaving away for somebody else to get rich and yeah. they're doing what they want to do to make their money. And I will support that every single day. You're That's literally right. living the, uh, the red pill life. And I, it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Nice. Nice. like, I like, I remember the day that I got to go in and tell my, my boss that I was quitting. Yeah. And like, and like, my boss was cool. He knew he like he knew it was coming because mm. I was just so busy. Like I couldn't do both anymore. Yeah. And so, yeah, you know, yeah. he's like, yeah, I would totally do this too. Good for you, man. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. You, but you like, broke out. You broke yeah. out of the social norms of the nine to five. Yeah. And, you know, it it was it's super cool, but it's also uh, stressful because like now everything's on you. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, if it doesn't work your fault right, like you, right right you can't blame your boss for right. being a jerk you can't do any of that it's it is all you yep. but i'll tell you this right now to be real with you man i have failed miserably at something that wasn't my dream mm -hmm. and it is the worst feeling you can have it is absolutely the worst i would rather fail 100 at something that i love doing yeah. because when you fail at something that's not your dream you feel like not only have you failed but you feel like time has been stolen from you and let's mm. face it time is something you, it's it's the most unrenewable resource you can non-renewable yeah. oh, resource yeah. ever yeah. yeah when you lose it it is it's devastating awesome. at least when you at least if you lose it's something you love to do you can learn from that yeah you no know, you Thank lose you. from something that you didn't even love to do 
Ugh, and, and it sucks. So I, I commend yeah. you so hard, man, for uh, doing this, achieving this, and keeping it going. And like I said, uh, make sure everybody checks out the promo code down there. Get 10% off, all right? Come on. I'm going to pull this back up, guys. Stop fooling around, all right? Look at these games. All right, it's a holiday season. You got New Year's, and then let's face it, fuck Valentine's Day. You can all be hanging out with your friends, playing these games. Then, actually, fucking, then full of it is actually very popular for Valentine's Day. The unseen, which one? Uh, full of it. The, co- full the of it? inappropriate conversation starters there always go. goes up for Valentine's Day. <laughs> there you go. It's right here. All right, look, it's right here. And then guess what? Fucking a DUI for March, all right? <laughs> you don't need it either. So get one of these games and drink at home with your friends. Wait, what What other holidays is there? Mother's Day? Just get her one of these, all right? Just get her one of these, all right? Get her, well, look at this. Hold on, let me go back over here. Look, 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 merch, merch. Look at that. Ah, oh, look at that. Your mom needs to see the unseen. Yep, because, there it is. Yeah, because we all, because people avoid their mother so perfectly. They call the shirt. <laughs> There My you go. Mom's not I, watching this. So, yeah, yeah. So I just gave you all literally five months, six months, including December. I'm going to include why you got to go on this website, why you got to use that promo code, and why you got to shop rookiemage.com, everybody. You heard it here. Uh, Jordan, before we go over our topics, is there anything you want to say closing it up? Uh, no, I, did, I just I had a good line on your uh, time thing of, uh, you know how in Superman, Lex Luthor says that land is the only thing they're not making more of? Yep. Time is the only thing they're not Time. making more of. I was thinking of. that. It's something similar to that. So yeah. I'm glad you said that. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they make know. land now. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they make <laughs> land now, man. <laughs> but we can't make time yet, but we're we getting there. time. We're working we're on it. there. We're working you know, on making we time. might destroy the fabric of the universe in the process, but... We're yeah. going to make it. Look, there's probably another one out there. So if we fuck yeah. this one up, there's another one. We'll just go over there and we'll be all right. All right. We're, don't worry. We'll be 35 years. We're on Mars, everybody. Okay. Okay. Right. So here's what I want to do. Because we, we promoted the show. We featured Jordan. We featured uh, Ricky Mage. And we said we we're going to talk about offbeat Christmas movies. But we didn't tell anybody which ones. Okay. Now, if anybody saw my uh, TikTok post for today, there were some hashtags that gave away some movies, but we gave Jordan a list of movies and he fired back with some movies. And so we're going to let Jordan pick the first movie that he wants to talk about. So Jordan, what offbeat Christmas film do you want to start with? Uh, well, we're going to have to start with Die Hard. Oh, great <laughs> choice. Why Good not? Die Hard, Why not? Man. I I watch Die Hard. I have watched Die Hard every New Year's Eve for the past 20 years. Nice. I get a six pack of beer. I order Chinese food and I watch Die Hard. Now, do you you time it where uh, where uh, Hans (laughs) falls right at night? Because they have it down. They'll tell you when you started to hit it. I have not done that, but I might do that this year now that you planted it in my brain. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, why do you watch Die Hard every year, Jordan? You know, I always really liked Die Hard because it was one of the first action movies that I watched that, like, I wasn't allowed to watch yet. (laughs) Yeah. So, like, I was like, oh, oh, I'm not supposed to be watching this, but, you know, this, for one, is good. And also, it turned out to be one of the best action movies ever made. Exactly. So, like, we're going to start start somewhere high, right? Um. And like I, I had always liked Die Hard, and then it, it it was probably about twenty years ago that like the debate of whether it was a mm. Christmas movie or not actually yeah. started. And like I had one friend, she's like, you know, it's not a Christmas movie. I'm like, well, guess what? I'm fucking watching it for Christmas now. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so it, like it, it kind of just started as a, a snub, um, but now it's just like. Yeah, I'm gonna watch Die Hard. I love watching yeah. Die Hard, so I just it's, do that every Christmas Eve now. The movie Great. is low key why office parties suck, and this is the worst <laughs> case scenario. <Yeah. laughs> well, hold on, like, Jesse. Hold on, though. Hold on, because at the Christmas party on the what floor number was it? 
30th? So, you know, I forget the four number. 30-something, I think it yeah, was. Yeah, it's in the 30s. Yeah. So, you know, we had the Christmas party, well, let's say floor 37 at the Nakatomi Plaza. People were doing coke. People were getting drunk. <laughs> I, I People that. were fucking. <laughs> so, were fucking. Jesse, this is the party I want to go to. What are you talking about, man? This I'm just like, saying the most. sounds like the best Christmas party ever, dude. Yeah, and then till Ellis is trying to hit on you and get laid. But you know what? That guy was cooked out. Okay, and that's what caused him to die. Show him the watch. Show him the watch. It, Show him the watch. It's it a doesn't Rolex. matter, Ellis. Dude, everybody <laughs> listen. Everybody has an Ellis at their office, anyways. Whether you work remote or work in a physical office, there's always that slimy sales guy that's not selling the products the right way that you need him to, but he's making his commission and. So he never he never leaves the business, but he doesn't do anything good for you. So why not let him die? Then everybody else can get coked out and fucking have a great time. (laughs) Let the one guy die and then move on. Everybody else has a great time. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, okay. So I mean, the party is fun, but it's like most most Christmas parties are awful. So let me reimagine what I was saying. Even the best Christmas party seems like there's something that will still go wrong. In this case a mock terrorist attack in order to heist a bunch of money and bear bonds and stuff. That was hidden behind a very sophisticated safe for very. 1989, I must very. say. Yeah, the that thing of, Walker, Texas Rangers, the laws of physics do not apply to that safe. Right, Jordan, thank you. Because it's like, <laughs> you're like, well, if you drill in, but you hit this, then this glass plate shatters and this happens. And I know that real saves do have fail safes like that. But as they're explaining it, then they start talking about how they're drilling through the different levels. And they have the LED readout on yeah. the like CRT monitor with a real floppy disk from like 1989. <laughs> yeah. you know? Star Wars. Death Star plan, right? <laughs> and I'm looking at that, and I'm like, "How are you accurately drilling? You just told me that if you do one millimeter off, you hit this glass plate, the whole thing shuts down. But yet you have this high powered, like laser powered drill. You're just gonna drill through it anyway. So I felt like there were no stakes in getting through the safe. Like none of that made any sense to me. No, and also like I don't, I don't understand the premise of buying a safe that doesn't work when the power goes out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I, it just seems like you know, some guy came up with it as a as a reason to upsell like the safe. Like, oh, it's got electromagnetic. The salesman, yeah. right? The yep. Guy's gonna exactly. sell it. Ellis hey, probably bought it. Why you need to buy this? <laughs> he probably sold Mister Nakatomi that safe. He was like, "Hey, man, I got a buddy who sells safes. This is the best one. You got to buy this." And he was exactly. like, "Okay, I'll listen to you." <laughs> Fucking hell, he deserved to die. See, I'm not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> selling his bullshit all over that building look what happened nothing that's turned true. out in his favor absolutely nothing got shot in the head that's what he got i want to i want to share uh share something real quickly uh because i mean like i said i, I every year as jordan mentioned there's always this debate that kind of happens again is it a christmas totally. movie is it not a christmas movie and i feel like whoever the hell made this settled it for me like that is a great cover that that is a great I saw cover. that floating around the other day, man. I really did. He, he had the perfect Christmas. He had the perfect plan for Christmas until <laughs> someone stole his detonator. <laughs> I feel like there needs to be like like a fireplace with a stocking in the background or maybe like a tree or something. Like, yeah, a little more it's festive. Just, it's missing a little bit of Christmas flair to it that's all it's just yeah. that little bit of a, a little bit of holly hanging from the logo a little bit of holly it's hanging there holly. you go but well, yeah uh, it, and it would have been nice to have william adderton in that too so it kind of reminds me of the same artwork for blind date that uh that he was in year, i think a couple years before i was trying to figure out like what other like uh like movie poster or like vhs cover that that was from but i just couldn't put my finger on it i think it looks a lot like i'm not saying like the way they're standing but the way that it's colored and stuff like that it reminds me of uh yeah. blind date but yeah a little yeah, bit it, just, little it bit. just says 80s like rom-com almost just by yeah looking. they thank you jordan thank you jordan it, it does i, I, I yeah but, so jordan out of every kill in Die Hard. Okay. What is your favorite number one kill out of all of them? All oh. of them. What's your favorite? 
I think the uh, thanks for the advice where he's stuck <laughs> under the table. And his, if you get, once he says, like, next time you get a chance to kill someone, don't hesitate. So he yeah. shoots at him. He's like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> it's funny that you said that because that's mine too. But if for a different reason. So as a grown up, I totally understand the humor in the exchange of lines. But as a kid, I was like, oh my God, he shot that guy in the dick. What the hell? <laughs> like, that was a big deal when I was like nine years old watching this movie. I was like, oh my God. Because like I just saw Robocop, he shot that guy in the dick. Then John McClane shoots. <laughs> this guy in the dick i'm like oh my is this a thing do i have to worry about this like i don't want to be in a scenario where my dick gets shot off like i need to pay it's, attention here it seems like a bulletproof vest and cut them into like briefs and start selling them <laughs> now you're talking man the bulletproof tunic man yeah we can market that shit. it seems like when we were kids two things we had to worry about quicksand seemed like it was everywhere yep. at the time yep. And yep. getting shot in the dick. That's yep. like two things. Totally agree, man. <laughs> Death and taxes, and then getting shot in the dick. Unescapable. Yeah. Uh, and, and Satanists, if it's in the 90s. Oh, Satanists. Yeah, Satanists. Yeah, 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 yeah watch out for them. Just deal with it. <laughs> there was a meme that I saw the other day. It was so fucking funny. Um, I forget what it was, though. I. It was like a... Oh man, it was like a, a Megadeth or maybe like an Anthrax poster. So I forget what the band was, but it was like Satan hasn't impacted anybody in 40 years and still has it. It was like something like that. It was just ripping on the Satanic Panic. And I was like, oh my God, this is so fucking perfect. Because you're right, everybody flipped the fuck out. And then it was like over nothing. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so getting shot in the dick, horrible quicksand anyone who was alive in the 80s and 90s is deathly afraid of quicksand thanks crawl so uh jesse what is your favorite kill because jordan and i found out we actually share a passion for the same kill what is yours jesse okay uh i'm gonna say i forgot the first guy's name but his and i have a reason why all right i have a reason why what's the the, the he's the brother of carl I love. Oh he, yeah, oh. I always forget his name too, dude. So don't feel bad, but I know exactly. Yeah, okay, what you're so talking about. here's why. Here's why I love his death. All right, because it reveals a lot of things that I just that that gives an extra layer to the story. Okay, number one, if I'm gonna kill somebody in that movie, that's exactly how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna fall down the fucking stairs, <laughs> and one of us will twist our neck, and hopefully it's not me. So like for me, I'm like that's relatable. That's how I would do it. Because hey, John McClane is the every man's action hero and i have to see myself in him and i see myself doing that so that's number mm -hmm. one number two i love how everybody in that all the terrorists in that movie all the robbers came dressed nice suits this dude threw on his sweats <laughs> <laughs> he was great wearing sweats dude didn't give a fuck man. he threw on sweats he like everybody they were gonna be there for a while so he dressed up there. <laughs> he was a smart one then wasn't he trying to like correctly disengage the phone lines and then the crazy guy just takes the song yeah, and this yeah, brother brother. <laughs> but this guy like hold on let me let me i can't remember what his name is hold i on. forget but, his name dude i i totally on, forget his name but yeah the, brother. The hilarious because when you're robbing a building with a bunch Thank of you. other like germans you don't give a shit what the fuck you look like you've got a gun and you've got a plan and that's all that you need like execute until John McClane shows up and busts cap in your ass. Like everybody, wait, wait. Here's the two brothers. All right, maybe we let's compare the two brothers. Roll. Ah, this picture's so bad. I need a nice, clear image. I mean, like, you might not find one unless you had one ready to go. Ah, uh, well, no, I would. Well, let's just let's pull up an image of Tony because that's his name. His name is Tony. Yeah, Tony? I was just gonna say his name's Tony. It's like yeah. the least German name. Yeah. <laughs> There he is. Dude, it's 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 that 80s German hair with those aviator glasses. Like he totally looks like one of the nihilists from the big Lebowski. Like that's where oh that my guy God, he is. I the think he looks like Jeffrey Dahmer a little bit. He does look a little Jeffrey. Oh, Dahmer. wait, wait, wait. I got it. Yeah, like this one right here. Yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. there's totally, Jeffrey. Totally right there. Well, yeah, it's like hold on. You look at all the other I Hard villains, like I just want to like 
I do love that he's wearing a sweatsuit, though. That's so fucking great, man. <laughs> like, it doesn't okay. fucking matter. You got Hans, Hans in like a three piece suit, and fucking Carl's brother shows up in a sweatsuit. Like, Carl, what are you doing, man? Dude, like, look at. You have to admit, at... Carl's hair is amazing, though. It, it is. It's <laughs> closed. It's beautiful. It's a little Fabian. Yes. Look, even the guy back the there has a suit. Takes care of it. Like, like, I'm just saying, okay, wait, here's a good image of everybody. All right, look at this. Look at everybody's suit here. Yeah. Look, his, his suit's freaking checkered. He's got a turtleneck. Yeah. This guy, this guy looks like he can go to church right now. He can go to church. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like it's like it's like he his grandma was like, Aren't you coming to church this morning? And he like threw something on and he still looks good. But then you got fucking Carl over here. <laughs> or or not Carl, sorry, Tony. 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 Tony get the memo on the dress code. Tony, like, just we like, have a theme, Tony, and you <laughs> fucked it up. Like, hey, Tony. Like, hey, by the way, we're gonna be we're gonna be knocking off the Nakatomi Plaza, and he's like, "Oh, fuck, was that tonight?" <laughs> Shit. Now, keep in yeah. mind, maybe they maybe they put him in a sweatsuit because it's a lot easier to write. Now, I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> you know, you, you gotta, gotta get out the of suit. It might be a little more difficult to write the message. So I would just take off the jacket and take off the tie and then write it on the very pure silky white shirt. Oh, I would I would have wrote it on the dude's bare chest if I would have killed him because that's like insult to injury, man. <laughs> insult to injury. <laughs> But like, yeah. oh no, this shirt's coming. I'm writing it on your fucking chest. In fact, let me carve it with my knife on there. Oh, so that might yeah. have been a little too far. <laughs> but also, but yeah, but also, like his death was like it, that's so that's why his so his death in a very nonsensical manner in, in reasoning is why I love his death because it's just it reveals and also it helps John um figure out that Hans is Han when they were in that yeah. scene. Because yeah. in a deleted scene, they pay attention more to the watches, and he notices that they're all wearing that weird wa that uh, German watch. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that was one that they deleted the scene uh, from the movie. But like that's how he deduced that. Oh God, that's that's Han, or or that might be one of the terrorists. So yeah, but yeah, I think I think that fight and that kill also really cements to him what the fuck is actually happening here. Well, yes, like it's like, dude, this is fucking real, man. Like this is happening. You're stuck in the middle of this. You've got nobody. The fucking uh, 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 breakfast club guys, the police chief, <laughs> out there, basically want to turn everybody off and not do anything to solve the problem. He had nothing so, to do. He had nothing to do that day. He didn't have nerds' butt cheeks to duct tape up. So. Right. <laughs> and then as soon as he shows up, then the FBI shows up and just takes it away from him. But then those dumbasses go up in the helicopter and get blown up. So it's just like, what? Like, nobody in charge makes good decisions except no. for John McClane. Hans yep. makes bad decisions. Police chief makes bad decisions. FBI makes bad decisions. Ellis made a bad decision. Everybody makes bad decisions except Ellis, for John McClane. And Ellis, he wins. Ellis always makes bad decisions. It doesn't look like, <laughs> it doesn't look like that. It, it doesn't look like the situation of that movie caused him to make any bad decisions. It just seems like it was just one after another. <laughs> Ellis, Ellis is probably in the Nakatomi location in LA because he was probably moved from the other locations because of harassment charges. So like, <laughs> I, I totally HR is moving him around. <laughs> they, they are. They're like, man, we got to move to Nakatomi now. We, we can't put him anywhere else. Like, this is the last stop. God damn it. This is it. This is the last one. This, this is it. This is his last chance. Ellis, yeah, I also thought that scene is like so important because it was like a new type of action movie yeah of yeah. where he's kind of playing cat and mouse mm -hmm. with the this guy he's fighting he's not just standing up with like two guns yeah. on each side just blowing him away he's, and he's not he's like, like trying to be clever and not just like out muscle him out military him mm -hmm. uh, well, which in, was in like other, really set the tone in other countries the title of this movie is called the reluctant hero so I mean that's what's yeah, so makes that. interesting about his hero. That's what's so interesting about this character. It's not like Commando where Arnold Schwarzenegger's like, okay, I gotta rescue Jenny. I got this amount of time. You know, right. this, is a guy, <laughs> this is a guy who called the cops, radioed for help, and they did pulled nothing. a fire alarm. He has done he did, he did everything in his power to not be a hero right. until it was too late. And that's yep. like such an interesting story. And I think that's sometimes I think as the series goes on, why that it sometimes loses that flair. 
Yeah. Because he was thrusted into the situation. He didn't seek it out. He didn't go, well, I'm fucking John McClane. I've done this already. I could do it again. You know what right. I mean? Like, yeah. No, right. this guy is in way over his head. He has not been trained for this. This is not something he knows how to do. He is going to make it up as he goes, and he's going to do the best he can to survive. And that's what I like the best is that, yes, he's a cop. Yes, he knows how to use a gun. Yeah, he knows how to fight. But he's not on steroids, okay? He's not an ex-Special Forces team member that nobody heard about that can, you know, do all these crazy elaborate things. He wasn't, like, held hostage in Vietnam with leeches eating his body. Like, he didn't get tortured and electrocuted. Like, this guy was just a fucking New York City, like, detective beat cop. And he was, like, put in this situation, and it was like flight or fight man and he's like i can't go anywhere my wife's still here the all these people are here guess i'm fucking fighting and he did (laughs) the the best things they did in that movie was just make him barefoot the entire time yeah because it just it humanized him in such Mm -hmm. a way and also added all these new types of scenarios like you never would see in a horror movie or an action movie because like no one ever gave a shit before what was on the ground like it was like oh it's just grass whatever now, like, that's an active part of the story of he's got to handle this scenario. Otherwise, he's going to bleed out from his freaking feet. And yeah. fun fact, that was a movie where they used fake feet. Uh, because when they started shooting, <laughs> they quickly realized that Bruce Willis needed fake feet. Because this was not going to work for three and a half months. <laughs> I'm barefoot. So he wore fake feet uh, for a lot of those, like, hero shots where you actually see his feet and stuff like that. They were they were fake feet, which we know they then used in Lord of the Rings as well and a bunch of other movies. So, yeah. but yeah, yeah, they quickly realized in production we need fake feet, so they made them fake feet. Yeah. But, All right, so uh, let's wrap up Die Hard, and we'll do one more. So, any final thoughts on Die Hard? We've talked about it on the show before. We love Die Hard. I think my whole thing is it's a total package film. It has something for everybody, uh, even the kids, man. Because when you're 10 years old <laughs> and you see these people killed in the most creative ways, it's like the best. It's like Total Recall, Terminator, Die Hard, all these action movies that I saw when I was like pre-teenager was just amazing. So kids, go check out Die Hard. But Jordan and, and Jesse, any final thoughts? Uh, uh, I'll just say that um, if if anyone thinks it's not a Christmas movie, I will fight you. I agree, hundred percent. There's music. There's the tree. They talk about Christmas. They play it at the like, end. It's, it's, it's Christmas, integral Christmas to the plot. Party. Like it ha- the, there's other movies that you take out of Christmas, and the movie's the same. This one, yes. if you take it out of Christmas, it's not the same movie. Agree. So, and I do want this book, movie. by the way. Yeah, I have seen this book. <laughs> yeah, I've got that. Oh, you have it. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it's been on my wish list for a couple of years, and no one's bought it for me. And, I might buy it for myself. And they also have an advent calendar where yeah. it's it's uh, Hans Gruber falling. <laughs> I saw yeah. that. Uh, that is really cool. I would love to have that. So um, let's uh, let's do one more. So Jordan, you're our guest. You have been a, a absolute pleasure to have. We have 13 minutes left. What movie do you want to close out talking about? Let's do Bad Santa. Because like oh. I, I I rewatched uh, what I talked to you yesterday like and we went through I'm like I'm gonna rewatch all these so like I come in fresh mm-hmm. so like we watched Bad Santa last night and then today I watched Batman Returns oh, which is surprisingly boring really you thought respect. Batman Returns is boring like anytime Danny DeVito's on the screen it's great but other than that it's just like oh I'm bored and then <laughs> we'll <laughs> yeah, have Iron to Man three back to that we'll, we'll, okay. we'll do another show for Batman Returns. <laughs> And then I watched Iron Man 3 this afternoon, and it's just like, yeah, I get why some people might watch it at Christmas, but, like, most of this takes place in Miami, um, <laughs> which is, like, the least christmas area in the United think, States. <laughs> and, like, there's not enough tie-in with Christmas to what's happening in the film. Yeah. Yes, it's happening during Christmas, and you can make that argument with Die Hard. Well, it just happens during Christmas. So, Jordan, to your point... Christmas is tied in with the story of Die Hard, whereas yeah. Christmas is not tied in with the story of Iron Man 3. Now, I'll go either way. I'll There's say, yeah, it's a that. Christmas movie. Yeah, it's not. But for someone to say it's not, I agree with them because it's not. But I could also see why someone would say it is. Yeah. But if you compare Die Hard and Iron Man, Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Iron Man 3 can easily be argued. 
Yep. Yes. Oh, no. Uh, now, here's the argument for it. it. It's a Shane Black movie. Shane Black, he's no, he, any movie he makes, I, I think a great 99% of them, they have these following character, these traits. Be careful. That man did that new Predator movie, and my God, that was a piece the, of the, This Predator movie doesn't fall in that trait. It, he, he actually broke a, he broke one of his own rules. Yeah, he broke more than one rule when he made that. <laughs> okay. Had to take place during Christmas between two uh, – opposite partners like they're just different in their own ways and there has to be a government conspiracy and it has to be happened during christmas time kiss kiss bang bang uh the long kiss good night uh the the last boy the was it the last boy scout yeah um, last boy scout. yep all those movies follow those rules what i just said the last boy scout it's been so long since i've yeah. seen it. i need to but watch they it. All follow i haven't them. watched it in lethal weapon years, i'm not sure i said that yeah but they follow so basically, it's not much that it's a Christmas movie. It's just he likes to make a, a, a government, very dark, conspiracy-like movie in the most happiest time of the year. Mm, he, uses it, he uses it more as a juxtaposition than to actually make a Christmas movie, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah, I get that. But anyways, yeah. let's get into Bad Santa. I don't want to waste any more time because I do want to talk about this movie, too. Uh, Bad Santa, man, like... Remember when this movie came out? It was really Bob Thorne, dude. Like, and that was it was at the peak of Billy Bob. It was like after the Angelina Jolie and like the blood shit, you know, and he was like kind of on his comeback up. And you know, I th- that was uh that that was after Armageddon. Um yeah. Yeah. Was it before or after Monster Ball? I can't remember. I think it was right after Monster Ball, because right after. I- Monster Ball, I believe, was 2000 or 2001. Yeah, that sounds Santa, great. I know, is mid mid 2000, like literally between 2004 and 2006. I can bet on it. Gotcha. So, you know, I, I think this was a fun movie to make. I mean, who wouldn't want to make a movie where you just get drunk on set and go out and read your lines and looking like the most like disheveled, like piece of shit person, you're fucking women in the ass and like not caring or telling them, but then they let you do it anyways. You're like borderline a petter because you're yeah. with some child that is not yours that you are creating a relationship with. Now I'm not saying that, that there was going to blur the lines of that kind of relationship, but I can tell you if a complete stranger moved in with a child for a few weeks in 2022, there would be problems. Yeah. There would be a That's lot a red of flag. problems. Yeah. Red flag well, these, all over the place. These comedies came from the age of comedies where they were so beyond politically incorrect. And yeah. they were just, they didn't care what the norms was. They just said, okay, in order for us to set up this joke, to set up these numerous jokes, this very weird thing that, yes, it's wrong, needs to happen so we can tell these jokes. It's The best example I could think of was um, uh, That's My Boy with Adam Sandler. The very beginning of the movie, it's an, an eighth grade student hooking up with his uh, teacher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, which nowadays you can't make that movie. But they yeah. made that movie back then, and they needed that to happen to explain why this guy is now on the celebrity trash talk network you know i mean like why he has that notoriety and he's not really famous he's kardashian famous and that's why but this movie like i said it it, the jokes justify the the means if that makes sense no i i totally get what you're saying and you know my actually and it's 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 so like most people like this movie for for other reasons but i i like the kid I I I, I like how he just walks around and just like stares at you because like <laughs> I've interacted with kids that do that where yeah. you'll be talking to them and they're just like yeah they're just and you're like bro are you picking up what I'm saying because I don't I, it's not all firing here and then the kid goes and he's like whittling a pickle out of wood <laughs> like it's just the strangest <laughs> shit ever and uh that kid just cracks me up. Like, I don't know if it's his greatest American hero hair. I don't know if he's cause he's the chubby kid. I don't know if it's cause he's weird. I don't know if it's cause he's whittling a fucking pickle, but that kid, like every scene with him, I just crack up. And so that's my favorite character. And most people 
they're probably not going to pick the kid. But for me, oh, any time I watch the film, like th that's the kid that makes me laugh, man. Yeah, I, I agree with John. That's my favorite character. <laughs> like, he's, oh, like, he steals every scene. He's he does. In. He does. Like, you, he is like a force of nature in that movie. <laughs> And it's uh, almost like, like a presence, you know? I, he's yeah. just there. Less exactly. like, more. Have some scenes, he's literally just standing there, and I'm just transfixed it of, like, what's he going to do? Is he going to do anything? Yeah. <laughs> no, and that's the point. He's just sitting there. Yeah, he's just there. <laughs> staring at Billy Bob Thornton, like, bro, what are you doing? Oh, you're drunk again. Cool. Oh, you're bringing this chick over to bang. Awesome. Hey, I need some food, you know? Like, you need to take care of me. And he's just sitting there just pounding the jack, man. Yeah, yeah. It, it like I said, he it, it it's just the presence. Like some of the best jokes are the jokes that you don't even say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and, yeah. and that kid, he was able to be so incredibly loud without saying a single word. And yeah. I think that's, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's why they had to bring him back for the sequel. I mean, whether you have like never the seen or the sequel. not, I haven't I either. I couldn't it. bring myself to watch it. To be I honest, could, yeah. I couldn't either. The only reason why I would want to watch it is because Kathy Bates plays the mom of Billy Bob Thornton, and she, apparently she's like fucking mean. And I'm like, okay, I could maybe try to watch it. But point is, for a sequel that really had, didn't need to be made, they had to bring the kid back, and that so far is one of the only reasons why I might watch it. Because I'm like, let's see what this kid fucking does. <laughs> you said yeah. Kathy Bates. I'll watch it. Yeah, yeah, that kind of was a a nice little fig leaf to, to get me like. I got a, okay, I I got a soft spot for, for <laughs> yeah. Kathy Bates. Ever since Misery, I've got a soft spot for Kathy Bates. Yeah. What's so sad about this movie is I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this. This was uh, Ritter's last movie. John oh, Ritter. really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. The the at the end before the credits roll, they do the uh, in memory of. Yeah. I didn't realize this was his last uh, his last film. Yeah, I don't know if it was his last role, but it was his last film, I believe. Okay, so he might have done like a TV show because he, oh, he, he had did, that show he, that he was on at the time. Eight, oh eight, yeah, with eight, the with eight, the eight hot rules. daughter or whatever. Yeah, eight simple or, rules. Yeah, eight, yeah, that's rules. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He that that was technically his last role. This was his last movie. movie role. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, but yeah, no, but anyways, like I said, this movie has just such a great storyline. A guy who uses being a mall Santa to get close to the targets, you know, the safes and all that stuff. And then to Christmas Eve to, you know, pull off the heist. And it's like every year they got to do this. This is like their big time of year. And it's hysterical. I just love this idea that, you know, like every mall Santa is like, oh, this is their big time of year. But for them, it's a big time of year for another reason. <laughs> so I love it. I think that this movie is a great uh, a great campaign for uh, anti drinking because if you think about it, these guys have a flawless business. They have been doing this for a decade, never been caught. But you know when they got caught? When Billy Bob started drinking too much. Had he laid no. off the sauce, they would have been able to do this and fucking retire in ten more years. But he started drinking, man. He started drinking. And so maybe sub the booze. Maybe meet up with, you know, S Stephen King, do some coke, and then go rob your place. You know? <laughs> I mean, whatever, right? Change it up a little bit. Don't just keep drinking. Do a different drug. Coke makes you sharp. So, I mean, maybe. Yeah, maybe, right. Maybe, maybe, maybe you would have cracked the safe faster. Maybe, yeah, he would have, he would have probably cracked the safes a lot faster. Like, Marcus would have showed up and, like, Ready to go, and he's like, "All right, cracked him. Let's get out of here." <laughs> he could have fucked two large women in the ass in that dressing two room. Large women all <laughs> out, man. So Come on. If there's one thing you learn from this show, is that just do say no to the booze, do coke. I, that's, <laughs> I think that's what we're getting out here. Like coke in the anything. dressing room. Cocaine is, I mean, it is the successful man's drug. That's all I'm going to say. It's, it's a hell of a drug, man. It's a hell of a drug. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, that's, and, and like I said, do Coke and also use the promo code. Uh, the oh, State look at that tie in. <laughs> nice tie in there. It, yeah. You see how I did it? You see how I did it? Do Coke and buy Jordan's games. <laughs> there you go. And, and I promise you, Coke will make every, it, it's all, it, he, all of his games are extremely fun. Now imagine doing coke and oh, don't drink. sell it that way, Jesse. <laughs> skyrocket, skyrocket, skyrocket. What's that falling from the sky? Fucking money, because we make it rain. All right, that's what. 
I, so I, what Jesse's yeah. saying, Jordan, is you need to find a Coke dealer and you need to pay him <laughs> up so that you guys can both sell your products at the same time. Okay. You're gonna put them in the wrong boxes, and like these kids are gonna get like porta potties for Christmas and open up like What's no, this bag of sugar, Mom? What am I supposed to do with this? Uh, Amazon's gonna ban me for this one. <laughs> there you go. Oh my god. Oh yeah. How am I not a spokesperson? How am I not? <laughs> I think you just answered your own question. I think I did. I think I did. Uh, that makes makes a lot of sense. But anyways, so uh, Jordan, tell us about why you love this movie. Why is it your favorite? Why is it a must watch for the holidays? Uh, I don't know if I'm going to argue it's much watch. <laughs> so, okay. Like, or, or, or when I first when I first saw this, like I saw it, like around the time it came out, I thought it was hilarious. And I don't know if I've just got older and lamer. Um, but like I watched it a couple years ago and I'm like, this is a lot darker mm -hmm. than like I remember it being. And like I'm fine with dark humor, but I'm like, this is just dark, dark sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so like I like I'm still enjoy it, but like I felt really depressed after watching it. <laughs> and like I, I, like normally it's just like, you know, haha, -ha, whatever. But I'm like, oh man, like. And some of that hits hard. <laughs> it does. And I think that comes with age, right? You see yeah. something when you're younger, like I I'm 41. So this movie came out when I was like early, early twenties. Right. Yeah. And I was in a completely different place, completely different mindset, you know, totally different person. And so it hit one way. Well, now that I watch in my forties, I'm like, Oh my God, like that makes sense. I can relate yeah. to that. Or bro you should have made a better decision you know what i yeah, mean yeah. Like, like, like i know some people that like that's a path that they kind of went on and stuff right and like, that, <laughs> right. <laughs> right absolutely so I, I think that's interesting too on with time how you can watch the same film but have a completely different experience depending on how old you are where you are with your life you know that type of thing uh and i, I to me that's part of what makes a film timeless and Bad Santa is definitely timeless. There's nothing that really locks it down in a particular decade or particular setting or particular piece of time. It's timeless. You can watch that at any part of your life and get something out of it. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, what's very interesting, that dark element to this movie, uh, there was th this movie originated from two really famous producers. They kind of like came up with the conception, hired people to write it and direct it. But do you know who those uh, producers were that made this movie? I'm not going to cheat and look it up, but I'm going to throw out a name, John Peters. No. Jordan? Any guesses? Um, Jordan's it looking it up. Thing? I can tell he's cheating. I can tell he's totally looking <laughs> it up. This is one of the reasons why I watched the movie for the first time. I watched a lot of movies. But when I was younger, I was so into comedians, but I was so into comedy writers, and I was so into pe learning people's IMBD pages. And when I found out these guys produced it, it was the reason why I watched the movie. Oh, then I don't know. I thought you were might have like might have been a Weinstein or something. Well, they did produce it, yes. But oh, okay. <laughs> the movie was brought to them. The Cohen brothers. Oh, no oh, way. Really? No shit. Mm -hmm. yep. Huh. yep. So that's why it has a very dark flair to it. This is but kind of what they intended. But imagine now let's they didn't write it on this. Hired. Imagine that they didn't outsource it. Imagine that they did it themselves. Ooh. 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 How much better would it have been, man? I think it'd have been. I think it. Well, okay. First off, um, the let's see. Well, let's Billy Bob Thornton would not be the one that's playing uh Bad Santa. No, no, I, no. Casting stays the same. Okay. Because yeah. the reason why I was like. I was like, Tim Blake Nelson is obviously playing Santa or George Clooney. It's one of those two. <laughs> George Clooney in this role would be very, very interesting. And I it think would he be. can pull it off. I, I think actually enjoy like, that. Yeah. Dude, he, he pulled off Jack Nicholson was considered. On. I yeah. feel like he could pull this off. Jack Nicholson would be a good one, too. Yeah. yeah. But George Clooney does till dawn playing bad Santa. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I think that would have been very interesting. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think Billy Bob Thornton is fantastic. I would not want to recast it. Sure, but, sure. But I'm just thinking, if we, if the Coen Brothers stereotypically made this as a Coen Brothers movie, you know, you know he's there. Like, <laughs> George Clooney or uh, the guy who plays uh, the Jesus from Big Lebowski. 
he would be in there. Oh, dude, John Turturro, man, he could have done it. That, actually, that's a really good one right there. Ooh. That's good. He could have pulled it off for he, sure. He could definitely have pulled it off. But I agree. But yeah, no. But I got to give this movie a watch again. It, I think I and I. It's such a good. It's for me. I love this movie. I don't mind the darkness. Some days I do. Some days I don't. I just appreciate for what it is because, mm-hmm. honest to God, I miss the times where we made comedies in theaters because we don't because one of the sad things in today's world we don't make movies like these anymore we don't I totally agree. If, totally if something's agree. a comedy it has to be in flared with something else it has to be yeah. an action comedy right horror comedy right you have to make sure it's mixed into something else but to make a straight comedy in theaters big budget adult comedy an adult comedy that's not going to streaming i mean is it, a the that there, I mean, I would argue we haven't seen anything like that since maybe the 2015s. I, I, 2015, probably. Well, I'm going to yeah, say that I'm still in the camp that they're going to do a fourth Harold and Kumar film. It's going to happen. Uh, I, <laughs> because if anybody can do a comedy and still get away with it, it's them. I, I think, I think they, and trust me, they would be heroes. They would be heroes in my book if they do it. So, so I hope they, I hope they do it and they make it quickly because. Uh, I want to. I want to be back in a movie theater where we're cracking up and laughing yeah. hysterically. Yeah. I do, I miss doing that like so much. Like we got to do that when we saw Clerks. That was a lot of fun. And but then, then we cried. Then we cried a lot. And then, <laughs> <laughs> but then yeah, you know, the closest we got to do that again this year was Violent Night. But it was one of those movies where it was mixed with action. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but I like you remember we were in that theater and you heard that big break of a pl- laughter. I miss that so much. Yeah. I think the last movie that I went to the theater that just had that kind of boisterous, like just cracking up hysterical the whole time was Borat. That was the last one I think oh I went to God. where I laughed of, that yeah. hard in a film. What a hell of a movie to laugh. At. Oh yeah. I went with my buddy, little Rob, <laughs> dude. We laughed the entire time. How Start old is that movie now? Uh, Borat was 2004, I think. Really? Jeez. Five. Yeah. I think it was five. 2005. I know, dude. Like the last ten years, just I had a kid, and it just flew by. <laughs> yeah, that that it was, makes sense. It was like I was thirty. I had a kid. I blinked, and now I'm forty, and I lost a decade. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, we are in overtime, so I just wanted to let, let's wrap up the show. So, anyways, any final things we want to say about Bad Santa? Uh, go watch it, and I'm gonna watch the second one now that I know that Kathy Bates is in it. Because I turned my nose up, and I was like, I don't even want to watch it. I want to consider yeah. it. This, this I don't want to ruin the first one. Now that I know Kathy Bates is in it, I'm watching it. I'm it, interested. It's decided. I'm interested. Yeah. I'll watch it, and we all we'll all report back with our thoughts. Let's do that. It. Let's report back. Yes. Yeah. And um, like for Bad Santa, like if you haven't watched it, watch it. But like. I don't see this as something I watch every single year, like Die Hard or Home Alone or Christmas. No, right. it have that caliber. It's not in every year, but the year that you do watch it, you're going to laugh again and rediscover your love for the film. I think that's yeah. a good way of putting it. Yep. Well, anyways, that is all the time we got tonight. I want to thank you, Jordan, for joining us on the yes. show. What an absolute pleasure. We got to talk about uh, all the games you got and make sure – Everybody, get on this website right now, all right? And check, like, right here. That's all you got to do is look down, promo code, grown-ups table. Get you 10% off, man. And uh, I, I'm excited. I'm going to be, like I said, I'm going to be doing a little bit more shopping because I'm Christmas shopping. I want to check some of these games out. And like I said, your next game, make sure you let us know. We would love to play it on, oh, on yeah. here and promote the shit out of it, man. Uh, yep. What you're doing is absolutely incredible. Like I said, you fucking red pilled your way out of a nine to five job. You totally did. You totally you. did. And you're you're a game maker, man. That's a that is just that is a that, that's so crazy. You get to say that. What do you do for like, a game maker? Like you know yeah, what I mean? But, but these people they're just kind of you like see their the like they're like okay, and then like you see the gears going. Like, <laughs> right, they're like, what does that mean exactly? That mean? Yeah. <laughs> and then you can just be a little cryptic and shit. You know what I mean? Like. You like how life works out certain ways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just go, or I like, that. have you ever seen the Saw movies? <laughs> and I just leave it that walk away. <laughs> I'm a game maker. Connect the dots. <laughs> I'm, I'm Jigsaw's un, uh, unknown partner. 
No yeah, one has exactly. found it yet. <laughs> I draw the shit. That's what they base the movies off of, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they don't. They don't report it because they don't want to glorify it and have copycats. And I'm yeah. happy because I don't want. That oh, I want fucking royalties. Yeah, yeah. It was brand new royalties. I designed this death trap. I want my fucking royalty right. off of this. Yeah, that's that's what I do. That's that's what I do. But anyways, promo code Grubs Table. Get ten percent off these games right now. All right, and uh, check it out. But anyways, Jordan, thank you so much for joining us. It was an Thanks absolute amazing time having you wow. on the show, and we will definitely get you back on. Yep. Thank you, everybody that tuned in and watched tonight. Uh, tune in. Uh, we'll, we'll have more show for you coming up next week. Uh, and make sure you, um, like I said, just keep subscribing. Next, Watch. Next, sorry, next week we're going to do traditional Christmas traditional. movies. Sounds good. Just throwing so we'll the feelers out there. We'll do traditional Christmas uh, movies. And make sure you like and subscribe on our YouTube page if you're watching there. If you're watching on Roku, make sure you keep coming back every week. We'll always have a new episode popping up. And until next time, I'm Jesse. I'm John. And you've been sitting at the Grown Ups table. Thank you, and have an awesome night, everybody. Take care. Good night.